I recently just bought a new accessory for my M4 Mac Mini and it's the new Apple Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and this one that you are seeing right here is the one that comes with the numeric keyboard and it ran me about $229 in Canadian. In US dollars the white keys are going to run you about $179 and the black keys are going to cost you $199. The only thing that changes is the key colors but the frame of the keyboard seems to be more or less the same and that's reminiscent when you zoom into this spot here that's none or that doesn't have any keys. Just as an FYI I'm recording this video on the new M4 Mac Mini since this accessory that I bought is for it so I decided why not just record the video using the M4 Mac Mini and see how it handles the load. I have multiple 4k cam link capture cards right here and the microphone input right there and we are simply going to be setting up the keyboard unboxing and seeing what comes in it and whether it's worth it or not. If you're a person that has the previous or an older version of the Apple Magic Keyboard there are actually a number of changes that Apple has implemented. Some of them are on the buttons and of course the USB-C changes but when you want to open the new Magic Keyboard you can see this is how it looks on top and then if we just flip it over you can see how it looks on the bottom for me. Right here you can see it has a pull tab that you can pull right there and then you can pull the keyboard out. Pull tab off. If I simply turn it this way, I can now pull it out. I wish Apple would have given us a way to pop it out easier without having to flip it over like this. One of the first things that you are going to see of course is the magic keyboard with touch ID guide and paperwork of course there's multiple layers stacked together and of course it comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable for you to be able to charge or manually connect your keyboard to your Mac. The magic keyboard with USB-C supports connections and expansions in the form of Bluetooth, USB-C and wireless which are different means you can use to be able to communicate or connect to your keyboard and that's just about all the accessories that you get that come with the keyboard it's just the paperwork and the USB-C cable and now let's look at the keyboard itself it has this wrap around it that you have to peel off first and there is no like green indicator to show you where you have to pull unlike the pull tab that the box has but yeah it has this dark spot here even the Apple Mac mini when I unboxed it it had the middle dark pot spot there but yeah I wish they would put like a green indicator right here to say hey pull this way because if you are almost colorblind it's sort of hard to see this spot but now you have to pull this off like this then if I turn it over and just like that this is how the new Apple Magic keyboard with USB-C looks. Testing the buttons feels pretty much the same to my old version of the keyboard. It's almost as if the top buttons of the keyboard are more firm compared to the lower button and then of course when you go to the spacebar it's more loose. One of the new changes that was recently pointed out and of course shout out to Steve Moser for being one of the first person to point this out is that on the new Apple Magic keyboard with USB-C and Touch ID Apple replaced the wide control key in the lower left corner with a globe key and they replaced the function key below the F13 key with a menu key and physically you can actually see those changes. If I bring the two keyboards side by side here you can see the differences of course. Now on the old keyboard we had control options command and now here we have function control option command so they have made changes right there and also if you look at this on the old keyboard you had like a function key just below the F13 but then on the new keyboard you can see that function key has been replaced with like a menu key right here. I'm quickly going to turn it on right here so if I turn it on and you see the green you can see the keyboard is on and if I go into my settings on my Mac Mini M4 right there settings and then go to uh, Bluetooth settings right here you can see uh, magic it says not connected it say this is the Benjamin's magic keyboard I believe this is the new one if I check the info tab it shows me the version and it's the magic keyboard with touch ID and numeric pad so yes 
this is the one and my old keyboard is this one magic keyboard with a numeric keypad so you can see some wording differences because the new one says magic keyboard only but this one says magic keyboard with numeric keyboard with numeric keypad for some reason the image that is showing right here for my old keyboard is correct because my old keyboard does have the numeric pad but it's not showing the new icon for the magic keyboard that has the numeric pad for some reason but now if i go and connect to it you can see it's connected and now if we go to uh the info tab you can see the version of it right there and you can see here benjamin's uh magic keyboard i can rename it and then give it another name of course now that i'm connected but it would be cool if apple had updated this icon to make it look the same as the keyboard to add the keypad section right there once i connected my keyboard for the first time this pop-up came up that says uh, system settings use touch id with magic keyboard your magic keyboard is wirelessly connected to this mac set up touch id to unlock this mac with your fingerprint i can click there and it will take me to the relative setting or at the same time if i want to go into the settings right here i can be able to set up touch id here for this mac and i can enable for example use touch id to unlock your mac and you can see double press the power button on your mac quickly press the power button twice to secure connect to your keyboard so i'll take my mac mini double press the power button okay that worked and now it needs my password and now lift and rest your finger on the touch id separately so let me quickly do that it's gonna take a few seconds to set up of course touch id is ready and now i'll click done and you can see when i enable this and i added the fingerprint you can see touch id has now been enabled and use touch id for purchases in itunes store app store and apple bookstore i usually enable this i usually add the same finger twice and that's one of the tips that i usually do and now I have the same fingerprint if i press this button it locks my mac and then if i use touch id you can see it unlocks it which is something that's good that's basically the new apple magic keyboard with touch id i also cover the apple magic trackpad with touch id as well here on the channel you can always check out that video but yeah that's all that it has to offer it changed two keys and it adds USB-C. I wish it would add like a backlit keys or key option for you to be able to turn on and off, even though it might obviously affect battery, but it would be a good addition to have for those that want to have that as an option for the price tag that it comes with. I think it should have that at least maybe the next version of this magic keyboard should be able to give that an as an option because a number of users have already requested for that. And I doubt Apple will increase the price because they already released a new Mac mini with an increased RAM from eight gigs to 16 gigs and the price didn't really change so with the keyboard just adding the backlit option shouldn't really increase the price one of the reasons why i bought this keyboard is exactly because of this whenever i want to sign into my different applications and websites you can see they ask me for you they give me the option to use the pass key and if i don't have like a keyboard with touch id that has the secure connection then it won't give me the option to use touch id and i have to bring out my phone and scan a qr code and use this as an option but now with this keyboard i can easily just use my fingerprint like this and boom i'm signed into the apple developer page and i can be able to see some of the changes and this works across multiple websites that use pass keys and where you can use autofill and authenticate using your fingerprint that's one of the convenience and that this keyboard has to offer and it's one of the reasons why i actually bought it and i think for me it's actually the only reason why i bought this keyboard so the question is if you have the previous um, keyboard with lightning should you be buying this new keyboard with usb-c personally for me i would say the upgrade is not really worth it unless if the keyboard maybe is the only lightning accessory that's remaining in your like tech setup then maybe in that case you might want to upgrade your keyboard but other than that this is pretty much the same keyboard 
the, the only thing that changed are the two buttons and USB-C and the compatibility list. According to Apple, it's a Mac with Apple Silicon using Mac OS 15.1 or later, but you can see some of the compatible Mac devices as well as iPads that they list. Some of them actually still have the Apple Intel chips, so it's not entirely limited to Apple Silicon chips like the system requirement page mentions right here. And yes, for it to work, properly you will need to upgrade to mac os 15.1 other than that that's the new magic keyboard with usb c i'm going to be keeping it of course as an accessory for my mac mini to be able to securely log in and hope you like this video let me know which other apple accessory you would like me to review and if you like this video definitely hit the like and subscribe so that you stay up to date my name is ben and i'm signing off peace Actually, before I forget, this entire video was filmed and recorded on the new Mac Mini M4, the base model with 16 gigs of RAM and uh, 256 SSD storage. So I'll let you know maybe in one of my follow-up videos how it handled the recording. I'm using a program called Ecamm Live to capture the different cameras that I have. And I'm using CamLink devices to be able to bring in the best 4K 30 FPS quality. And the next thing I'm going to do is edit this video and then publish it using the M4 Mac Mini. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video and let you know how the experience has been for me. My name is Ben, signing off for the second time.